Excellent. Okay, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The final build of the Marvel vs. Capcom Game Room Solutions three-quarter scale arcade. I have a lot to say about this. A critical review. It's not all good. If you know my channel, I'm not monetized, so I have no reason to sugarcoat this like other people do. You're going to hear the truth, so stick around. You're watching The Rexer Show. Okay, if you haven't seen any of my previous two videos on the level up three quarters scale arcade, this is a design done by myself and uh, my Discord buddy Kumla, who uh, does a lot of Photoshop work with me. We designed this ourselves. Right side is Capcom themed, left side is the Marvel theme. Okay, I said there were issues. Let me get into them. First one, corners get damaged on the shipping. I had a couple corners that got dinged up. Not going to be perfect. I understand that. They could have protected the corners a little better but you are gonna have some scuffs and, and a couple nicks on it. Next thing, the T-molding is crap, they sent me. I'm so disappointed in this T-molding, I wrote and complained. It's all scratched up and it looks terrible. I'm actually gonna to have to get new T-molding and probably redo it myself. Also, when doing the T-molding, they did not slot the groove deep enough in every area. Whoever did the slotting on the routing did a terrible job and I had to groove it out myself uh, to get get it to stick in there. You're tapping it in, trying to get it in, it's not going in, trying to figure out why. It's because the groove isn't cut deep enough. This was also an issue with a gentleman named Portal Rock who got his unit the same day I did and had similar issues as I did, one of these being the team molding issue and not getting it in the grooves deep enough. Another issue is there's a board that runs in the middle of here and the edge of it is unfinished. So it's not painted, I had to paint it myself in here because when you're standing here playing, you can see a piece of wood kind of in here that's unfinished. Another thing, they did the graphics here and they slanted it, it's slanted. If you look at this line, you can kind of see it's going downward. Really bothersome to me, it, it, it's kind of driving me crazy, but nothing I can do at this point. It's very slight, but when you're OCD, you notice something like that. Okay, I briefly wanna go over the dimensions. It's 61 inches tall with the riser. I'm six foot four, so you can get a reference. The depth of the unit, 23 inches from the front of the control panel to the back. Width right here from the far end of the control panel to here is 27 and a half, 28 inches. The height from the ground to the control panel is 37 and a half inches. This is important if you want a stool. I have a 24 inch stool. It's not tall enough. I sit too low. You're going to want something around 27, 28 inches for a stool. Distance between joysticks is one foot. Distance from the end button to this joystick is five and a half inches. Very important so you don't block hands here and uh, bump elbows. There's plenty of room for two adults. I've uh, tested that. The weight of this unit, extremely heavy. Uh, it takes two people to pick it up and, and pretty much carry it. You're not going to carry it up the stairs like a one-up. Like I saw the one guy do in his video, just lifted it up and carried it upstairs. Extremely heavy, especially when you add the riser to it. It will move on hardwood floor. If you got buddies like me who think pushing the joysticks harder makes the characters do uh, their moves better or makes them run faster, then it's going to shift a little bit on a tile or hardwood. You can fix that by getting some carpet uh, grasper here. This goes under carpet normally, and it's just a spongy, sticky material. You just put it underneath. You can get this at Lowe's, and it'll stop it from sliding altogether. Okay, one issue for me was with my height, I actually get the top of the screen cut off when I'm standing at normal position. I kind of have to back up or slouch a little bit so I can see the whole screen. Not gonna be an issue for most people, but for me it was. Okay, the backside, this is a nice finish, a nice black laminate, very nice. They do a great job with this part as well as the graphics. Not, no complaints on the graphics, they're very nice. One issue I did have is this door does not sit flush when you first install it. There are brackets in here to adjust it, but even adjusting them, you cannot get it flush unless you move this bracket back and redrill holes yourself. Not a big deal. People won't see the back. But again, if you're OCD and you want it perfect, you're going to have to reset this bracket right here. Okay, just taking a look inside real quick. There's an LED light for the marquee. This one actually has multi colors. You can switch colors if you want. I'll put a link in the description of where I got this one. Also in here, these right here are computer speakers that I have for my desktop. It was overkill. I didn't need them for my desktop, trying to save some money. No amplifier needed. I just bracketed these on the sides. Got a subwoofer down here. Sound is excellent. Okay, one major issue I had. 
the monitor I had did not sit centered inside the bezel. So in ETA Prime's video, he used a monitor and said it fit fine and was centered correctly. I had my own monitor, didn't want to buy another one. This one did not sit centered. I had to drill new holes and align it. It was a big pain. If you're going to buy a monitor, make sure you probably get the one for, uh, that ETA Prime suggested because it'll sit centered. Okay, let's take a look at the emulation and the guts. Okay, let's take a look at what's inside. It's a Lenovo Think Center. I wanted to run some games like Killer Instinct and NFL Blitz, so I needed something a little more powerful. I just got a Lenovo Think Center right in here, and I just push the power, boom, it loads up uh, into RetroPie. I'm running Ubuntu on it and RetroPie on Ubuntu. Joysticks and buttons. Let's talk a little bit about those because I think that's the most important part when you do an arcade to give you the true gaming experience. What I have here is HAP joysticks. Now I have two different kinds. This yellow one right here is the ultimate. This red one right here is the competition. I actually prefer the super, which is different from them both. They go price ultimate competition super. The difference of these two obviously is the feel and the engineering and the micro switches. These two use a square actuator. The actuator is this right here, which will spin when you're moving and clicking. But on the ultimate it doesn't spin that well and it kind of gets hung up every once in a while this uh, one here is a much smaller uh, actuator and engineering and it spins really well inside on the competition so some people prefer the ultimate but i gotta say i prefer the competition most more so i prefer the super and i prefer the x arcades because they use a circle actuator instead of this square actuator the feel is much different as well these ones are fairly loud and clicky, but some people like that. Some people like that feel. Uh, these ones are much more quiet, softer, and I feel like I can pull off the special moves a little bit easier with these than the ultimate. So the competition to me, way to go. Okay, the buttons. The buttons I used are some hat buttons here. I got different. I got some from different sources, but mainly they're all the 28 millimeter uh, concave button style. But the micro switches, I had to switch out some micro switches. Some of the buttons I bought uh, online came with these blee red micro switches right here. Do not like them, and this is why. The button on these, as opposed to an X Arcade micro switch, is placed slightly in a different location, and as well as is it's a little bit smaller. But when I'm hitting the button on the edge with these red micro switches, it wasn't clicking. I had to hit it right smack in the center because the button was angling down and the, the pin that hits the button was missing. So I had to hit straight on the nose of the button in order for them to work with these bleed, these red micro switches. I had to switch them out for these X arcade micro switches in here. So you'll notice these are white and then these are red because these are other buttons that are uh, just hotkeys and, and those. So I used them for those, but I couldn't use them for normal buttons on the play they just misfired and they just didn't work well okay the encoders i got two separate encoders here they were simply 18 dollars for the pack of two i was going to use the uh, x arcade tank stick encoder but the wires the wiring harness wouldn't reach because it's set up strictly for the x arcade i would have had to rewire and do a whole bunch of modification on that didn't want to do it okay one thing i want to point out is level up has four buttons up here at the top there's four blue buttons up here if you can see them they're pretty much useless right because you're not going to use them when you're playing for an R, for an R2 or an L2. But what I did was I convert I converted these buttons into single button hotkeys. So what I have here is one button for the game list where you go back out of the game and it takes you right to your arcade game list. I have a hotkey for retroarch when you're in the game, just one key, and I have volume, volume up and volume down. So when your wife is yelling at you to turn the game down, you can quickly turn it down instead of having to open up and change a, a volume meter on, a, on an amplifier or I saw Re, uh, Restalgia put one up here which was a lot of work you put a separate uh, volume thing up here that's a lot of work I just put it it uses retro arch decibel level as a hotkey and it's a single hotkey that you can just use in game if you like that idea if you want to see how I did that I'll, I'll do a separate video comment in the description and I'll do a separate video on that to show you how I did it it's really cool. You just go up and down volume while in the game. It makes use out of these buttons. Okay, let's talk about the emulation and what I set up here. Again, I'm using RetroPie. I put all my games in one list, right on the arcade list, whether I have Arcade, MAME, FBA, or even I have Mario Kart for an N64 
and I have Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on here as well. So if you want to play Dreamcast, hey, you got it right here. Love, the, love that move up the wall. I think that's one of the best moves, even though it doesn't do anything. If you want to play the Punisher, got it right here. X-Men vs. Street Fighter, here you go. X-Men, Children of the Atom. All the Street Fighters if you want them. I got 3DO Street Fighter version on here. If I want to play the, the fast Street Fighter 2 Turbo that's on 3D, uh, 3DO. Then obviously I put some other ones like Mario Kart on here. So if you want to play Mario Kart, got it right here. So I, ha I only have 75 games on here. I'm not going to put... 1,000 games. I know I'm never going to play them. I only put my ones that I that I really like. I also have custom bezels that I made and uh, my buddy Kumla made. We had to we had to do a lot of them individually. I tried some bezel packages. I tried to use uh, uh, some people's packages, but some of the bezels just weren't right. They have that TV in the middle, and it was even cutting more of the game off. And the monitor is already small, so I didn't want any more of the game cut off. Uh, so we took uh, those. I think they were rocket launchers. His bezel loss. His bezels. And I manipulated those to make sure the majority of them were standard uh, four by three. You can see pictures here of me putting them in there. Those are uh, custom bezels that we had to make, or at least uh, manipulated custom bezels from rocket launchers and, and some other uh, bezel projects. So one last thing, I, I just want to show you this uh, volume button meter here that I put in. See if you can hear it. So can you, I don't know if you can hear, it, but it's pretty loud. I can turn it down, turn it back up. See, the, these joysticks are so much better. You can just, you, you don't miss a Hadouken or a Shoruken. You know, they're just, and I'm at a bad angle here. Just turn it down and turn it up with one button. Really good functionality there. I love that hotkey that I did uh, for the volume. So final thoughts on this, uh, it was a pain in the ass to put together, it took a lot of time. If, if you don't want to put the time and effort into it, then don't get one of these because you're going to have to put everything together, uh, maybe get a one-up and uh, it'll be a lot easier to put together, but the one-up will be junk. Uh, this is a solid piece of machinery. I still like it. I still promote it even with all the problems that I did have. As always, thanks for watching the Rexer Show and uh, check out my other videos I did on this unit as well. Please comment in the bottom if you want to see any of the stuff that I talked about or have any questions about building this cab and what I did. Thanks again.